What's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt and we are working on a 1974 260Z. And today, we're gonna get going on building this engine. So, stay tuned. So what we're gonna start with is sealing the block up essentially. So we wanna put in the core plugs and the block plugs. So we'll go to the bench here. We've got also our oil galley plugs. From our stainless steel bolt kit, we have our block plug, and we're gonna use some high temperature thread sealant, and both of those are Allen keys. And then for our core plugs, we're gonna use some sockets that fit roughly about the same size, and then hammer those in with a little persuasion. And to seal them, we're using Permatex Ultra Black sealant. Let's get that on the block. Right, so we have the block all plugged up, got the rear on and as well the sides. Now the tougher parts are this core plug because you have this piece that is sticking out. So holding on to your socket, even a deep socket is helpful. And then the next one is this one with the oil dipstick. Now what I did here is I used a flat hammer and slowly buried it down and then use my socket to fully seat it. So now what we're gonna do is work on the crankshaft and we're gonna turn this over and then we're gonna work on the crankshaft bridges. All right, so now that we have the core plugs in the block and everything is plugged up where it needs to be in one note, prior to adding oil to the engine, that's when we're gonna add the oil filter and the oil sender. So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna rotate the block we're gonna put in the oil breather baffle, and then we're gonna work on the crankshaft. So let's flip the block and get going on that. So we're first going to put in our baffle, and that is with the cord around the mesh down. And that just fits into the pocket down below. Then we take our baffle, and that will sit right over the mesh against the block and out of the way of the piston. And we're gonna take our two Phillips with our lock washers and tighten those down. So the baffle will sit up against the wall and look just like that out of the way of the piston. So now what we want to do is work on the crankshaft and we're going to go ahead and pull the caps off and take them to the bench. Now with all the caps out, what we're going to just do is go over the bearing races and just make sure they are nice and clean. being very careful of the edges because they can be sharp. All right, so with the caps on the bench, basically what we wanna do is clean them, but first we want to check that all the edges are nice and flat. Our machine shop did that for us, but if you didn't have your machine shop do that, you'll just take a nice flat file and just really lightly go ahead and file those edges, make them nice and clean. So speaking of clean, let's go ahead and clean these caps up. We'll do it the same way we did the inside of the block and then go ahead and prepare this for the crankshaft. All right, so we went ahead and cleaned the inside of caps off camera. You don't wanna see that, that's boring when I clean stuff. So what we have now is them flipped over in order, you know, front to back, one through seven. And now what we want to do is put in the bearings. Now, the one thing I will note before the comment section goes is that everything has been miked at our machine shop. So everything's been checked. We have the right size bearings. If you have had any work done, you might need a different set of bearings. So now with that, 
there are a couple different kinds of bearings that you're going to find in your box. You're going to have one that has a hole and a channel typically, and that's for your block. The smooth one is for our caps, so we'll be using these. And then you'll have this thrust bearing, which has a hole and a flat. And this is for the center cap. So what we're going to do is take our bearing for our cap, and you'll note that it has a indent, and that's going to line up with the indent on the cap, and we're just going to push that in. Now if you accidentally push the wrong bearing in, what I find is if you push from the center of the arc, it'll twist it out and pop out. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is place all our bearings, and we want to make sure that they are nice and flush with the top. Do it for the rest of the caps, and as well do our center cap, which is slightly wider than the rest. Seat that down. We're going to do the rest, and then the block. Now the one thing I forgot to mention is our rear main cap is slightly larger than the remaining caps. So when you place it, you'll see that it's slightly larger. And that is also true on our front cap. So the front cap is the same size as the rear main cap. So just make sure that all of your caps have the right bearings. And now with all of our bearings in place, what we're going to go ahead and do is use some assembly lube and get it spread out on each of the bearings. And that includes the caps. And for the thrust bearing, just also get some on the side. Now we're going to grab our crankshaft. And this has been cleaned. And we're going to go ahead and place it in the block. Some people install the crankshaft with the rear main sail in. I'm going to place it in after and just give it a little spin. I'm going to add a little more assembly lube to the top and then I'm also going to apply some assembly lube to the bearings of the main caps. And as we grease them, we'll place them on the block. And when putting the caps on, just make sure your arrows are all facing forward. And we're just starting the bolts with your hand. All right, so before we put in the rear main cap, what we want to do is take our black RTV and we're going to spread it in the corners from about here back on both sides. And of course, I got rid of the, the end, so I'm going to have to use this tongue depressor. It doesn't need to be a lot, it just needs to be in that corner. And you want to put it to about the halfway mark. And of course, doing it with the end of the sealant is much better. Now taking our rear main cap, we're gonna put some silicone in the side channels. And then what you wanna do is get out your seals for the rear main cap sides from your rebuild kit. We're gonna go ahead and drop this in. Persuade to the rear main cap down. And we're going to go ahead and put our seals in. Push them down as far as we can. All right, so now that we have our rubber side seals pushed in as far as we can go, we're going to take our side seal expanders, and you'll note that one side has a bevel or a point, and that point is gonna go, for, so for example, on this one, the point is gonna go on this side, and the angle of the point will be kinda like my fingers are pointing, so that way it doesn't dig into the seal. 
We're gonna push those in. And using a flat blade screwdriver, we're gonna push those in. And they should go flush with the block. So now what we want to go ahead and do is finger tighten all of the bolts to the caps and then we're going to torque them to spec. All right, so we have our dial indicator set up for our thrust measurement and we've moved our counterweights over and we're just forcing it all the way to the rear of the engine and now we're going to force it all the way forward. And we're in specs so we are good to move forward. All right so what we were looking at with the indicator if it wasn't able to be seen on the screen is we were looking to make sure that when we moved the crankshaft all the way back and then all the way forward. That, that distance traveled is no less than 20 thou of an inch. We're well within spec. So now what we get to do is rotate the block and we're gonna start working on the pistons.